Hey, this is Kelly Key along with Franklin, and we are back in the Ford Mustang. Only this time, it's something just a little bit different. How different is this vehicle? Well, it's not anything that is unimaginable not by the least so what is it well this is basically a mock-up of a vehicle that kind of came to mind and there's been some internet articles about possibilities of certain configurations within the Ford Motor Company lineup. So what do you have in the Mustang lineup? Well, you have a base model Ford EcoBoost. We actually tested some variations of the EcoBoost motor. We've done some upgrades to some of the EcoBoost motors. There is a Coyote V8 Mustang, which is a 5.0 liter Mustang. And there's certain variations above that. There's the Mach 1, there's the Billet, there was the GT500. So, what primarily is this? Well, to find out what this is, what I've done is I have read an article. And the article is a Motor Trend article. So, what's inside the Motor Trend article? Well, the Motor Trend article talks about a 2021 Ford F 150 hybrid. It asks the question, what is it? Or how powerful is it? Well, what Ford Motor Company did for that SUV based upon the article is sandwiching a 44 horsepower, 221 foot-pounds of torque electric motor between the 394 horsepower and 492 foot-pounds of torque 3.5 twin turbo v6 so I know you're asking well what does that have to do with the Mustang Mustang has a 2.3 liter v6 and they have a 5.0 naturally aspirated v8 and then they have the what they have the 5.2 liter motor so what we did and I'm going to pull over a little bit so what did they do or basically what is this well to answer your question what did Ford do well Ford Sandwiched a 44 horsepower, 221 foot pound electric motor in their 3.5 or a coupled it to the 3.5 a liter twin turbo V6 EcoBoost engine and they sandwiched it in between that and the 10 speed automatic transmission. What does that do? Well, that boosted the horsepower of that F-150 hybrid with the question mark to 430 horsepower and 570 foot-pounds of torque. And they reference that the outgoing Raptor is made 20 more horses but 60 fewer foot-pounds of torque. That makes this the torquiest F-150, this side of a Super Duty power stroke diesel. So what does that have to do with the Mustang? Well, 
you know that we were in this upgrading kind of phase with the EcoBoost Mustang, which is a 2.3 liter twin turbo EcoBoost four cylinder Mustang. So there has been some articles of people questioning or asking, you know, well, why don't they slide the 3.5 in there? Well, you would have to kind of go back in history. Now, there was such a thing as an SU, as a SVO Mustang. So, with the SVO Mustang, that had a 2.3 liter four-cylinder engine in it, and it was as fast or had the same amount of horsepower as the V8 5.0. So if you're still not making a correlation to what's actually going on here, um, in history, the Mustang started gaining more power. The EcoBoost or the SVO Mustang of the 80s 85 was kind of phased out. So what does that mean? Well, that meant that therefore there was a 5.0 for a while and then they changed it to a 4.6 and then they reintroduced an updated version with more tech involved into a naturally aspirated 5.0 engine. So if you're still not paralleling, what that did was that brought a different level of performance. What Ford ended up doing for the bottom line is, is that they ended up getting rid of their 307 horsepower 3.7 liter as their base and they left the four cylinder 2.3 liter EcoBoost as their base model car. Now that gives you 310 horsepower and 350 foot pounds of torque. Now there's certain levels of performance that you can get and the whole main purpose of the four-cylinder Mustangs was that it was more of like a more nimble pony car so if you're still not making a correlation between what's actually going in here this is more of like a tweener but it's really not it has almost the same horsepower as a 5.0 Mustang, but it has a whole lot more torque than a 5.0 Mustang. So what does that mean? That means that the performance of this vehicle far exceeds that of a Mustang. Now, there is a penalty to having a 3.5 liter EcoBoost motor inside of the engine compartment of a Ford Mustang. What is that penalty? Well, that penalty is weight. Now, as a versatile as the 3.5 is with so many different variations because it's applied to so many different vehicles from front wheel drive vehicles to your trucks so and some SUVs so why would you want to do something like this well for some the sound is a solution you know 3.5 liter V6 sounds different than the 2.3 liter EcoBoost 4 cylinder. 
the other thing is is horsepower and now given that this vehicle is the same configuration technically as an F-150 the possibilities are there what possibilities well whatever's good for the F-150 in its truck form which is heavier heavier well somewhere around 5,800 pounds as opposed to a Mustang which is lighter now we know that they're going to be doing some changes and we know that the effect on the environment um, but this kind of construct kind of gives us a little bit of leeway to do some possibilities so what possibilities are those well first we'll have to dive into what's going on with this vehicle now what we did to it is we per the article it says that this vehicle is heavier than the standard like super cab Raptor so by it being heavier we added more weight to this vehicle so by adding more weight to this vehicle it isn't as nimble and light as it was so does the added horsepower and torque counter for that yes it does um, because there's one thing that it is it's still going to be a little bit lighter or along the same lines as a 5.0 liter naturally aspirated motor and it can achieve higher output at lower RPMs which means that this vehicle can accelerate pretty quick now most people that buy Mustangs that's kind of what they're looking for now Ford has put a spin on things and Ford has I did a review on an electric Mustang it was going to be fully electric now that one will catapult you just like some of the Teslas or something it will catapult you very fast but there are some people who are still looking and while we still have combustion engines which is kind of old technology in the electric propelled vehicles are more of the new technology so what does that all equate out to well it equates out to some flexibility because there is still some needs for some trucks now there isn't a need per se for a like in this instance a four seater or two seater coupe so what would be the purpose of this well Mustang has a long history pony car history it was one of the first introduced so it kind of seems right to give it a little bit of versatility so henceforth Ford Mustang power boost well where did the power boost name come from the power boost name came from the F-150's new 21 power boost vehicle that has 430 horsepower and 570 foot-pounds of torque so what we did is we applied that to this Mustang so this Mustang is basically a 3.5 twin turbo v6 with a 10 speed for transmission so what does that do well I was testing it out a little bit earlier and we're revisiting it now to make some tweaks um, and to kind of justify um, certain things. The first time that I actually introduced it, it was 
a little lighter than it should have been. So I ended up, you know, adding more weight to the vehicle. How much weight? Well, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Ford has done a whole lot of work, so therefore we just added 171 pounds to it. We gave it a red line of around about 5,000. I know that most engines have a higher red line than that, probably around 5,500 or 52, somewhere around there. But to achieve certain horsepower in this construct of a system the red line has to be placed there so that therefore I know when it's going to achieve the greatest amount of horsepower is that the same as real life situations no but I do know that the vehicle would be more powerful than a EcoBoost Mustang, which we've tested it in, you know, they're somewhere around high fours. So, what does that mean? Well, the article reads that the truck can zip to 60 miles per hour in 5.3 seconds. But this is with an all-wheel drive system. Now, figure that with a lighter chassis, rear-wheel drive, just how much quicker that would be than the 5.3 seconds. And then with that much torque, how much faster this vehicle would be. So, what did we do to this vehicle? Well we adjusted the suspension because we had to counter for some of the weight um, and I have learned a little bit more about this construct of the suspension system so therefore basically we kept the springs around the same we had to adjust the shocks though on the vehicle so that therefore it can handle a little bit better of course we gave it more weight but one interesting fact by this being a hybrid vehicle same as the f-150 power boost which is technically considered a hybrid vehicle it's a different kind of a configuration than your turbocharged which we have a turbo set up in this vehicle and your naturally aspirated configurations. So what does that do? Well, that assists you getting off the line, which means that though that electric motor is going to give you instantaneous torque. So what does that do? Well, that will propel this vehicle down the tarmac at speeds that are hopefully faster than a 5.0 Mustang now will something like this be expensive it probably would be because you have to think with that amount of torque and the tech that would be involved in this vehicle and the certain upgrades that will have to be made to accommodate they'll probably charge more money for it. okay so what we're going to do is we are going to jump inside it now I said that this configuration is rear wheel drive only it is a 3.5 liter twin turbo v6 its configuration is of the power boost settings which gives it 430 horsepower and 570 foot-pounds of torque now what other things did we do to the vehicle well the vehicle is in a gray it has a power bulge hood 
to allow more airflow to come into the front grill area and then come out and go over the windshield and then there's a larger rear spoiler there's black Mustang wheels there's the power boost badge on either side to signify to everyone around that this is not just a 5.0 and this is not an upgraded 2.3 liter EcoBoost Mustang. This is in fact a power boost Mustang. Now this vehicle is outfitted with our standard purple headlights because we are always led with the purple. This vehicle has a sleek gray body and pretty much nothing else pretty much signifies what it is. You would really have to look at the side of the vehicle to really understand. So if this vehicle is coming down the street, now by it not having the standard Mustang logo in the front, you would know that it's probably a lesser model than the 5.0. And if you're from the back, you would see the pony there. And so, therefore, you would realize that this is possibly just a four-cylinder. But it's not until you get onto the side of it that you're going to realize that this is a little much, a little bit more than just a EcoBoost four-cylinder Mustang, which, by all means, is not a, what do they call it, slouch? So, I'm going to get a little bit more familiar with the vehicle. So, hopefully everybody's having a wonderful day. It's approximately about 9.14 a.m. It is January the 22nd, 2021. Hopefully everybody is inside and safe. You know, we have a new administration. We have a lot of other things that are going on in our government. Now, like I was saying, this vehicle has a 10-speed automatic transmission. Top speed in this vehicle is is roughly around about 155 miles per hour still. Let's check our fuel. Okay, let's do a couple of launches. All right, we have traction control on. Our turbo is set to approximately about 15 PSI. We'll get our timer all set. All right. Now this vehicle is in stock mode, so The drive mode configurator has not been upgraded to the highest performance level. So this is just a baseline performance. Traction control is on and here we go. So we're about 4.968. We'll do another one. Here we go. So we're roughly about five seconds. And here we go. So about 4.933. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to take this vehicle and we are going to put it into the highest mode for the transmission, brakes, and engine. So therefore, what does that mean? That means that we're going to have a 
better brake configuration so therefore we have better stopping power that means that the engines going to liven up some more we have full power and with the transmission that means that we're gonna have sh quicker shifts So we're going to get our timer all set up. I'm going to turn the vehicle around. All right, traction control is on still, and here we go. So we're about 4.2 seconds, and here we go. So we're about 4.5 seconds. See, now we're reaching into the naturally aspirated 5.0s kind of ballpark figures. Let's do one more. So about 4.2, 4.3. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn traction control off. What is that going to do? Well, that's going to probably let the back end swing out a little bit more. Get a little bit more wheel spin. That's going to give full power to the rear wheels. Now we're going to probably have to take this vehicle out. To get some fuel. But hopefully we don't have to. Now we left the standard brakes on it. So we're able to get sideways just a little bit.
So it seems to be performing rather well. So we have a V6 vehicle that is somewhere between low force to high force. So that's going to pretty much kind of conclude our video for right now. So I'd like to thank you for watching and I will talk to you in the next video.